Hey everybody, my name is Anissa. Welcome back to my back to my um I hope everybody had a wonderful rest of the week and I am coming back to you guys. Hopefully I could drop these videos every Thursday like I want to. So hopefully when you're watching this, it's Thursday. <laughs> but um anyway, let's get started. So I'm gonna be reading to you um first Corinthians three, six or seven. And um, the title, I don't have really a title for this. I just have the scripture as the title. Um, yeah, but we are gonna be talking about growing it, growing our relationship with God and the importance of growing our relationship with God in this time and season that we're in right now and in every season, because you can never get enough of God, right? So anyway, let's go ahead. So I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So, I just wanna dive into that a little bit, but first I wanna say a small story. So when we were younger, I have four siblings. I have four other cousins on my mom's side and my mom's side of the family lives in Jersey. They've grown up in Jersey, blah, 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 blah. So when we were younger, um, now everybody's moved down here. But when we were younger, we would always go to Jersey every year for the past, like, since we were, since we really, I think it's in, in, until we got to high school, maybe, actually. Until we got to high school, we would always go to my grandparents' house, um, all the cousins. And we would always be there and they would have us planting. My my grandparents are the biggest planters, gardeners. They love, they love that. They eat it up. Like I love, I love plants. I do. I love the aesthetic of it. Like I'm such a like, I'm zen. I that's me. I I love stuff. I'm calm. I love all that. That's why my favorite color is blue, because blue is such a pure, calm color. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm calm. But anyway. So they had us out there slaving, literally like every, we were always there for at least either one to two weeks or a week. And they would always have us out there slaving every single day, at least, at least an hour every day. We would be up there planting, planting all these type of trees, fig trees, freaking pear trees. I think we even, um, apple trees. I know we, we got um, uh, peppermint or um, peppermint bushes out there strawberry out there i mean anything you could really think of that could be planted was planted tomatoes ooh, tomatoes we, we definitely had tomatoes out there before so yeah they had us doing that and what i've learned from that is that when you put a seed in the ground it has to be on good soil once you put it on the ground after you put it on the ground after you covered it after you watered it you can't just expect it to grow if it is in a dark area you can't expect it to grow if it's covered by the shade. It needs the sunlight. The sun is essential to the plant's growth, literally. The sun is literally probably the only reason why the plant will grow. You can water, it could be on good ground, but it's not gonna grow. So that, so in this text, we were being compared to plants because we need sun, which is i.e. the sun, Jesus, God, we, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, we need to lean on Jesus and we need to grow our relationship with God in order for our personal walk to be more than just a surface level relationship. We have to grow our own relationship with God to experience the wonders and the miracles and the blessings and the favor that God wants to unleash to us if we just take that step to grow with him. So that's what I'm really talking about. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but I do kind of want to make sure that we as Christians understand that we can't depend on our relationship growing while we grow with people. Meaning, meaning we can't like me, I have a lot of, I am now a part of a ministry where I am around a lot of people my age that force me to be accountable and that force me to grow. And, but they also have to understand that I'm not growing just because I'm around them. I'm growing because they push me to, to want to 
build my relationship with God. They pushed me to want to read my Bible. They pushed me to want to push into the presence of the Lord. They pushed me to want to encounter God. I'm not growing because I'm around them. I'm not growing because I um, love to go to my women's meetings on Mondays. I'm not growing because I try to mentor with my uncle every mo Monday. I'm not growing because of that. I'm growing because those people are pushing me to want to push into the presence of God. I can hear from my man of God on Sundays and it could be a good word and it can go out one ear and the other, go in one ear and out the other because I don't see the importance of what he's saying. And it's not necessary because I don't see the importance because, but it's because I don't see the importance enough to want to go back in my own time. Cause it could be like, wow, you're really talking like, amen, pastor. But a lot of times we just leave that amen at the altar. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we don't go back into our own personal spaces in our own altars and we don't build our own altars in our own prayer closets and we don't push. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm not blaming anybody cause I'm also guilty of this too. But a lot of times that's the reason why our relationship is so surface level. That's the reason why a lot of times like in the beginning, of this chapter they're talking about how we are baby christians and how we can't we can't drink the salt we can't eat the salad foods yet we could only drink milk because of how, where we are with god and a lot of times people are three year two year four years in with god and they're still a baby christian it's because they are building their relationship with god strictly on the works of god and that's because they put people in front of god and they feel like that because they are pushing to do the works of the ministry and they are pushing to be the first person in church and be the aim that they be the first one to say amen the first one to shout they are pushing to sometimes be around only people that are Christian and like-mindedness but a lot of times they're not they're only taking it to that level and they're not taking it past that level they're not pushing into the presence and that's where we're only gonna stay but so far with God and a lot of times a lot of people end up being more religious religious than being than having a relationship because they don't see the difference and that can really end up getting that can really end up you being idolizing people instead of idolizing God really and worshiping God and putting your all in God. So in this time of quarantining and being at home and doing nothing else but being at home, <laughs> just try to use this time to push into God's presence and focus on what God wants you to focus on. If you don't know what your purpose is, you don't know what your plan is, if you don't know what your vision is, it's 2020. This is the time, this is a great time to call on God and ask for your vision if you don't know your vision yet. I'm telling you, this is it. He's gonna give it to you, I promise you. Like, this is the time. And if you know your vision, perfect. This is the time. If you know the plan God has for you, perfect. This is the time to go one-on-one -on -one with God and literally try to get all you can get from him. Soak up, soak up in his presence and see where it takes you. That's literally it. it. That's all I can really say. Like, we all wanna grow. We all wanna leave these places that we've been for the past, I don't know how many years. We all wanna break these cycles. Like, why wouldn't you not wanna break your cycles? Why wouldn't you not wanna go into the next level of your life? Why do you not wanna unlock what God has had, what God has for you for your next level in your life? Like, who doesn't want that? If we don't grow, we're not gonna be able to see the blessings that he has for us. And that's the biggest thing is to, and it's not even the blessings, but the wonders. Like I said, it's the wonders and the beauty of him and the life that he has for us is way bigger than we can even imagine. So try to do it. If it's only a, a whole three minutes longer that you're praying, that's growth. If it's only an hour that you are able to just be in his presence, that's growth. If And if it was only 30 minutes prior, that's growth. If you can only do five minutes, do, listen, try seven. You know, if you can only, if you have been doing, if you master 30, try 45. Like, you know, just little baby steps. It 
he just draw near to him and he'll draw near to you like it's really just he wants to see us drawing he wants to see us there he wants to see us trying so yeah i'm glad that you guys stayed into the end to listen to my devotional um my little two cent my little two cents of sprinkle of the word of what i feel like it means to me and what i feel like it means to my little my generation in my eyes so yeah i hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the week and you know stay blessed stay clean stay quarantined stay home you little nasty that's it that's all that is that's it that's all it is to it okay i love you guys and yeah i'll see y'all later